All television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. The burden of Damascus, which in the future ascents, is symbolic of captivity. We saw in chapters 13 and 14 the fall of Babylon, which means confusion, and the fall of Moab, which symbolizes politics, in chapters 15 and 16, both having to do with what's in your forehead. And now we come to Damascus, symbolic of captivity, the captivity of the mind, that is to say, with the Assyrian of old besieging Damascus literally, carrying away the inhabitants of the city into captivity and afterward carrying away the ten tribes to the north, the kingdom of Israel, into captivity also, the Assyrian being a type of Antichrist. So we're talking about when Satan appears as the false Christ and the captivity of the mind when the whole world, except for God's elect, go into the captivity of confusion, the king of Babylon being a type of Antichrist also. Babylon means confusion. But at the seventh trumpet, when the true Christ returns, Babylon falls and along with it, the captivity of the mind because all are changed into spiritual bodies at that time and then we go into the captivity of almighty god when the true christ returns as king of kings and lord of lords and as it's written in deuteronomy chapter 30 and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee the blessing and the curse which i have set before thee and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the lord thy god hath driven thee and shalt return unto the lord thy god and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return at the seventh trumpet and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. The good figs, that is to say, God's election who hearken unto his voice with all their heart and with all their soul. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Christ will send his angels, and they shall gather his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth, to the uttermost part of heaven, as it's written in Mark 13, verse 27. The election that have died throughout the centuries, being gathered from heaven to Jerusalem, along with those who are alive and remain, the good figs, which is why in the very next verse of Mark chapter 13, he says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree, and the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. The multiplication taking place at the second resurrection when all who choose to love our heavenly father go into the eternity, the third world age. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live eternally, that is to say. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee. The evil figs that are driven out of Jerusalem at the seventh trumpet. Not just the Kenites but all who refuse to hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord our God. So the burden of Damascus returning to Isaiah chapter 17 with a word of wisdom from our Father in Jesus name. Damascus is taken away from being a city swept away that is to say as you can see in your companion Bible with the broom of destruction we read of in Isaiah chapter 14, the destruction of Satan's captivity, the captivity of the mind when both his role of Antichrist and his one world system are destroyed at the seventh trumpet. It shall be a ruinous heap. The cities of Aroer, which means ruin, are forsaken. They shall be for flocks which shall lie down and none shall make them afraid. This phrase you'll also find in Ezekiel chapter 39, which lets you know the time frame at the end of the hour of temptation when the true Christ returns and the millennium begins. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, the captivity of Almighty God, Jacob being all twelve tribes, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous for my holy name. You're not part of Israel unless you're a Christian. If you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. If you're not in Christ, then you're not Abraham's seed. And if a Christian is deceived by Antichrist, they're no longer part of Israel, spiritually speaking, which is what Israel is, 
Christianity. They can't come out of the confusion during that space for repentance before the seventh angel sounds, but if they don't, they're counted as evil figs along with the Kenites. They become part of Satan's family tree. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land and none made them afraid. Many will bear their shame during the thousand years, but after the second resurrection, shame is done away with. There will be no more pain in the third world age as it's written in Revelation chapter 21. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. First at the seventh trumpet at the beginning of the thousand years and then again at the second resurrection at the end of the thousand years when the third world age begins after the great white throne judgment. Neither will I hide my face any more from them for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel saith the Lord God. And if you go to the last chapter of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 48, here you see the names of the tribes from the north end to the coast of the way of Hethlon as one goeth to Hamath, Hazaranon, the border of Damascus northward to the coast of Hamath. So there you see Damascus during the millennium, but there is symbolic of God's captivity here in Isaiah chapter 17. Damascus being taken away from being a city means the captivity of the mind, the captivity of confusion ends, and the captivity to Almighty God begins at the seventh trumpet. God's elect are already in captivity to Almighty God. That you'll find written of in Hosea chapter 3. So returning to the book of Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 3, the fortress also shall cease from Ephraim. Historically, when the ten tribes were taken into captivity by the Assyrian, but in the futurist sense, at the seventh trumpet, when the lion, Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh, has its dominion taken away, along with the bear and the leopard. As you can see in Daniel chapter 7, verse 12, the lion being symbolic of the Christian nations, Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh, but at the woe of the sixth trumpet, they're plucked up by the roots, meaning they cease to be Christian nations, because they begin worshiping the devil at that time, plucked up by the roots, the true vine being the true Christ. Then when the true Christ returns at the woe of the seventh trumpet, he destroys Satan's one world system, including his role of Antichrist and his fallen angels, which are Daniel's fourth beast, and as it's written in Daniel chapter 7 verse 12, the rest of the beast, that is to say the lion, which is Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh, the bear, which is the Ezekiel 38 confederacy, and the leopard, which symbolizes the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties. They had their dominion taken away, yet their lives, the souls of the people involved in the one world system, were prolonged for a season in time, the time being the millennium, the season being when Satan is released from the bottomless pit after the thousand years are finished. If they stand against Satan at that time, they take part in the second resurrection and go into the eternity. But if they follow Satan at that time, they also follow him into the lake of fire, which is the second death. So the fortress also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Syria, they shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts, both having been deceived by Antichrist to going into the captivity of the mind, receiving that mark of the beast in their forehead, which is where your mind is. If they don't come to repentance before the seventh trumpet, they don't take part in the first resurrection because they're no longer Christians. And in that day shall it come to pass, the day of the Lord, which is the millennium, that the glory of Jacob, that's all twelve tribes, shall be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. All flesh having been done away with at the seventh trumpet, but really this is speaking of the shame of those who were deceived. Remember in verse 26 of Ezekiel 39, after that they have borne their shame and all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid. The cities of error are forsaken, they shall be for flocks which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid, as we saw in verse 2 of this 17th chapter of the book of Isaiah. And it shall be as when the harvestman gathereth the corn and reapeth the ears with his arm. The harvest being the end of the world at the seventh trumpet when the good figs are separated from the evil figs, the wheat being separated from the tares. Whether the tares be Kenites, the natural branches of Satan's family tree, or those grafted in, they're all counted as evil figs. They're all in the same basket, that is to say. Just as all are one in Christ Jesus, all are one on the negative end of the spectrum as well. There are two family trees, and you're either part of one family tree or the other. And it 
shall be as he that gathereth ears in the valley of Raphium. Raphium being named after one of the descendants of the offspring of Satan's fallen angels, the angels that will be destroyed at the seventh trumpet because they make up Daniel's fourth beast. That's when the good figs are separated from the evil figs, yet gleaning grapes shall be left in it as the shaking of an olive tree, two or three berries in the top of the uppermost bough, four or five in the outmost fruitful branches thereof, saith the Lord God of Israel. The election, that is to say, the good figs who are gathered to Jerusalem at the seventh trumpet, those in heaven even being brought back with Christ to reign with him for a thousand years, those of the election who had died throughout the centuries, such as Paul, Silas, the Zadok you'll find written of in Ezekiel chapter 44. At that day shall a man look to his maker, and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. And he shall not look to the altars, the work of his hands, neither shall respect that which his fingers have made, either the groves or the images. They shall not worship the image of the beast in that day, because Satan's role of Antichrist will have been destroyed, with Satan himself being locked up in the bottomless pit until the thousand years are finished. In that day shall his strong cities be as a forsaken bough and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there shall be desolation. This is becoming part of God's family tree upon repentance, returning to the Father through the true Christ, even during the millennium, which is the point of the millennium. It's a time of salvation as well. No one is saved in any other way but through Christ Jesus, who will be on earth at that time during the millennium, teaching, but only the Zadok are allowed to approach Christ during the millennium, so he will send them out with the teaching to spread it to the 144,000, who will then distribute it among the people. Just as Christ fed the multitude with the loaves and fishes, he didn't directly do that. He gave them to his disciples to distribute among the people. There shall be desolation, because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation, Satan being the desolator who makes one's mind desolate of truth, killing them spiritually, but that's reversed once they come out of the confusion before the seventh trumpet sounds when the Holy Spirit speaks through God's elect, the Zadok. 232 of them possibly during that time with the full number, the full 7,000 coming to earth whenever they're gathered from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. So at the end of the generation of the fig tree, the good figs are gathered to Jerusalem, the evil figs are cast into the outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and there shall be desolation because of the desolator, because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation, and hast not been mindful of the rock of thy strength, the true rock. They become evil figs because they worship the desolator, Satan in his role of Antichrist, who appears at the sixth trumpet in Jerusalem. Therefore shalt thou plant pleasant plants, and set it with strength strange slips, the slips of a strange god, that is to say, as you can see in your companion Bible, the false rock, they worshiped the false Christ and became evil figs. In the day shalt thou make thy plant to grow, this isn't in that day, but rather by day. Check it out in your companion Bible, not in that day as in the millennium, but this is looking back at the hour of temptation, which begins five months before the day of the Lord begins. By day shalt thou make thy plant to grow, and in the morning shalt thou make thy seed to flourish, the seed of deception, as opposed to the good seed, which is the word of God. But the harvest, which is the end of the world at the seventh trumpet, shall be a heap in the day of grief and of desperate sorrow. Damascus, being symbolic of the captivity of the mind, shall be a ruinous heap, the harvest being the end of the world. When Satan appears as the false Christ, he's going to claim to be Jesus, making it seem as though all these prophecies have already been fulfilled. But when you rightly divide the word, clearly the subject and the focus of these burden chapters of Isaiah, chapters 13 through 27, is the seventh trumpet when the true Christ returns and the day of the Lord begins. Rightly divide the word of truth and study to show thyself approved. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas, the waters being the people that the global political system emerges from, those four beasts written of in Daniel chapter 7, they all rise up together in a one-world political system at the woe of the fifth trumpet, the New World Order, as it's called. And to the rushing of nations, it'll have seven heads, the seven continents of the globe, that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. Again, Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, the waters are symbolic of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues.
things. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them at the seventh trumpet, and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. The focus here being the seventh trumpet when Satan's one world system is destroyed, as well as his role of Antichrist. Again, in Daniel chapter 2, thou sawest till that a stone was cut without hands, the true Christ, the true rock, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone, the true Christ, the true rock, that smote the image, became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. And again, God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. And you see a perfect picture of this in Revelation chapter 19, where we see the beast, that's the supernatural ingredient, Satan in his role of Antichrist, and his fallen angels, Daniel's fourth beast, and the kings of the earth and their armies, the lion, the bear, and the leopard, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army, the armies of heaven, the angels of the true Christ, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, Satan's role of Antichrist and his one world system, including all his fallen angels, the ten fallen angel kings that reign one hour with the beast, and the locust army, Daniel's fourth beast, and the remnant, the other three beasts, that is to say, the lion, the bear, and the leopard, were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. They're changed into spiritual bodies at that time, at the Battle of Armageddon, as well as the Battle of the Valley of Hamangog. That's where the bear will be destroyed, a different geographical location, but both battles transpire at the exact same time, at the seventh trumpet, when the true Christ returns. So what we just read is exactly the same as Daniel chapter 2, verses 34 and 35. The iron and the clay, that is to say the supernatural on the negative end of the spectrum, clay being symbolic of the flesh bodies, which are destroyed at that time as well. The rest of the beasts that you can read of in Daniel chapter 7, verse 12, they had their dominion taken away, no more one world system, yet their lives, their souls, were prolonged for a season and time. The time is the millennium, the day of the Lord, and that season you can read of in Revelation chapter 20, verse 3. When the thousand years are finished, Satan must be loosed a little season. Whoever follows him at that time will be blotted out in the lake of fire. Everyone else goes into the eternity. Verse 14, to complete the chapter, and behold, at evening tide, trouble, Satan's five-month-long tribulation, that is to say, immediately followed by the thousand-year-long great tribulation. And before morning, he is not. Before the thousand years begins, Satan's role of Antichrist is destroyed. And before the third world age begins, Satan himself is destroyed in the lake of fire, along with all who follow him at that time. This is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. <laughs>